Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friends, make sure that you subscribe and you like this video and also press the bell because the bell will let you know when a new video comes out. If you love Heidi, Cherry and Vea, make sure that you go to the link below and you join the patron group. Then you'll be part of the cat club and you'll get three exclusive stories every month for just $7 a month. I hope you enjoy the meditation. I love you. Bye. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Jump into your bed and get all comfortable. Make sure that everything is just right in your room so that you can relax and let go of your busy day. Stephanie had just woken up. She was full of energy. She slept so good and so deep while she was dreaming the night before, she was dreaming about Moonbow Forest. And she figured since today is Sunday, she could go anytime she wanted. Why not now, she thought. Stephanie walked over to her dressing table and sat down. She looked at herself in the mirror just like she always does. She went in one of her drawers and pulled out a hairband and put her hair up into a ponytail. She doesn't know why she did that. She just felt like she needed a pony today. Sometimes you just have to get your hair out of the way, she thought. Little did she know that she would need a ponytail. She was going to be pretty busy. And then she closed that drawer and opened another drawer and put some cream on her face. She rubbed some body lotion in her hands and on her arms that smelled really good. It was like vanilla flavor. She lifted one of her arms up to her nose and took a big, deep breath. It smelled like cake. It was delicious. It made her just a little bit hungry. And then she opened a jewelry box, took out a very special magical earrings and put them on one by one. She closed her eyes straightened her spine and rested her hands in her lap and waited. At first, her tummy was the first thing that she noticed. It felt like thousands of butterflies flying around inside of her tummy, excited, tingling, it was a really nice sensation. She loved it. It was one of the signs that the earrings were starting to work. The tingles seemed to vibrate out from her tummy all the way down to her toes, all the way up her back and down to her fingertips. And then her nose twitched and itched and tingled a lot. There in front of her eyes was the veil. She smiled internally, happy to see it once again. The veil looked like a see-through transparent curtain, silvery, sparkly, like the moon was shining on it. 
She could barely see what was on the other side most of the time, but she always got shadows and shapes and things that she could see through the veil. She reached up and pulled the curtain between this world and the world that took her to Moombo Forest. And then, just like that, she stepped inside. She felt the grass on her bare feet, soft and spongy. And she took a big, deep breath and knew exactly where she was. She paused for a second before she opened her eyes. She paused because she wanted to savor the feeling that she had inside of her. The feeling of excitement and anticipation. The feeling of coming home to another place where she belonged. She wanted to feel that feeling trickle and flow throughout her entire body. She stood there silently, holding her breath, feeling everything that she could feel. And then she opened her eyes. When she opened her eyes, she saw 13 unicorns all in a row. 13 unicorns, all different colors, different sizes, all staring right at her. Luna was directly in front of her, smiling her smile. And then as she looked left and looked right, all the other unicorns were smiling at her also. Happy birthday. Luna said. Stephanie paused for a second and thought, it's not my birthday. And then she said it out loud, it's not my birthday. Luna said, well, kind of, it is. It is here in Moombo Forest. Today is the 13th time you've been here. It's your 13th birthday. Stephanie smiled. Oh, wow, that's right. Is that why there's 13 of you? Stephanie had been counting quickly in her head while she was talking with Luna. There were 13 unicorns. Luna said, yes, my dear, 13 of us to take you on 13 different adventures. And you're starting with me. Luna motioned her head for Stephanie to walk over and climb on her back. Stephanie knew exactly what she meant. She didn't say anything. She didn't need to. As she walked towards Luna, she felt the grass give way underneath her feet. And she felt a surge of Moombo Forest energy run, almost sap, through the base of her feet into her body. Electrifying. Magnetizing. Waking her up. Making her feel very, very excited and energized. She climbed onto Luna's back and stared left and right at all the other unicorns. They all said at the same time, we'll wait here. Luna gracefully lifted up off the ground, spread out her long silver wings and started to fly. Stephanie tightened her grip around her mane and bent forward and leaned down closer to Luna's head the wind was blowing through her hair. 
it smelled sweet, like summer. A mixture of fresh cooked grass and sweet smelling flowers, along with all the other wonderful stuff there at Moonbow Forest. She closed her eyes and just felt the wind blowing around her body and through her hair. All she could hear was the wind and Luna's wings. It didn't take long to where they were going. Luna landed in the middle of what looked like hundreds of rose bushes, all different colors, red, pink. There was even blue roses, blue. There were silvery roses, white roses, yellow roses. There were roses that were half pink and half yellow. It was the most beautiful place to go, and it smelled divine. It smelled like roses and chocolate. Why can she smell chocolate, she thought. She looked at Luna and said, wow, this place is so beautiful, Luna. Luna said, yes, it is, and it's finally ready. Are you hungry? Stephanie looked around. Is it the roses? Can I eat the roses? Luna nodded her head, and that was all that needed to be said. Stephanie walked over to a rose bush that was red, deep vibrant red, like the color of blood when you prick your finger. She reached up and then checked with Luna again if it was okay and Luna just nodded her head. She plucked one of the roses from the bush and brought it up to her nose and smelt it. Roses and chocolate. She bit into the big red rose head and the chocolate instantly melted on her lips and in her mouth. It was so sweet and silky. It was the best chocolate that she'd ever had. Wow, she said as she turned around and looked at Luna. And Luna smiled. Don't eat too many, she said. You've got lots to do today. Stephanie finished the red rose and then walked over to a rose bush that had orange roses on it like the color of fire. She picked one of the orange roses off the bush and put it straight in her mouth. There was a brilliant burst of orange flavored chocolate. Wow, she said. Stephanie was walking through all the different rose bushes as she said to Luna, how long has this place been here? Luna said, it's been brewing for the last two years. We've been growing them and tending to them and watering them for the last two years. Wow, said Stephanie. This truly is a beautiful place. Thank you for bringing me here, Luna. Luna said, you're welcome. Now let's go. About 10 minutes later, Luna landed next to all the other 12 unicorns. Remy, a golden unicorn, stepped forward. She bowed her head to Stephanie and said, Okay, it's my turn. Stephanie climbed on the back of Remy. And within a couple of seconds, they were up in the air, flying through the sky. 
Remy flew south. Seven minutes later, she landed in the middle of what looked like maybe 20 or 30 different muddy puddles. Muddy puddles that you would play in and jump in. But the muddy puddles weren't brown. They were like an orangey-yellow colour, like the colour of mustard or something. Stephanie looked at Remy and said, Where are we? Remy said, Oh, have you not been here before? Welcome to the cheese dip puddles. Stephanie laughed out loud, uncontrollably. This is amazing, she said. What do I dip in them? Remy moved her nose in the direction to the left and pointed over at what looked like a pile of cut grass, but when she got closer, it wasn't cut grass, it was chips. Chips and cheese dip. Are you kidding me? said Stephanie. This is the best! She grabbed a big handful of chips and ran over to the closest cheese dip puddle and dipped her chips in the cheese one by one. The cheese sauce was dripping down her chin. It was warm and gooey. It was delicious. It was just the right amount of salt. Just the right amount of cheese. Just the right amount of everything. Stephanie said, I could stay here all day. Oh my gosh, I love cheese dip. Remy smiled and said, Oh no, you have way too much to do. This is just the beginning, my child. Time to go. Stephanie quickly shoved five more chips and cheese dip in her mouth and then, as she munched, climbed on the back of Remy. And they flew back to the others. Next was Sam. Sam was a grey unicorn. Deep grey. But it shimmered in the light like silver. And he had dots on the back of his body. Like he was speckled with freckles. Sam said, My turn. Stephanie climbed on his back and they flew northwest. They flew high, really high, as if they were flying up over the clouds, up over the stars, up over the moon, up over the sun. She felt like it was that high. And it took a while to get to where they were going. Stephanie noticed that she was getting a little bit sleepy on the back of Sam. Maybe she was full already. Maybe she shouldn't have eaten that many chips with cheese dip. She closed her eyes and took the opportunity to rest while she was flying there on his back. And then they flew towards a tree. Stephanie looked and thought, how can a tree be this tall? They were literally over the clouds. There isn't trees this tall, she thought to herself. The tree was a very unusual looking tree. It had lots of branches, but they were all wide apart and spread out really far. So it wasn't a tree that was closed and bushy. It was a tree that branches went here and there and everywhere as if they were going on their own journey, miles away from each other. And as she flew closer, she noticed these round, tubular things hanging from the trees. And as she got closer, she noticed that the round, tubular things looked like tacos rolled 
tacos, but huge. Huge to the point where you could actually get inside of one and roll yourself up in it. Sam landed on one of the branches. The tree was that big. And right there next to them was a rolled taco. A full, adult-sized rolled taco that unrolled as if it was opening up like a flower to the sun. Sam said, Do you need a nap? And a snack if you want. Stephanie said, No way, Sam, with her eyes big and wide. Sam said, Yes, yes way. Go ahead, I'll wait here for a while. Stephanie walked over to the taco and laid down on it, and it instantly curled around her like a cocoon. It smelt delicious. It smelt like what you would think it would smell like. She closed her eyes and then opened them and thought, I wonder if I can eat this. And she reached up and nipped a little bit of the taco off between a finger and a thumb and put it in her mouth and chewed it around and tasted it and yes, you can eat it. Crazy, she thought and closed her eyes again and had the sweetest 10 minute power nap she had ever had. It felt like two seconds later that she opened her eyes. Time had just flown by. And when she opened her eyes, Sam was smiling down at her. Are you ready to go back? He said. She nodded, stretched her arms over her head and yawned a little bit and then the taco fully opened and she climbed up back onto Sam's back and flew back to the others where Lily was waiting. Lily was a pink unicorn. She was super cute, quite small. Lily said, My turn. Stephanie climbed on her back and they flew up into the sky and away from all the others. Stephanie noticed that it looked like Lily was flying up towards one of the big white clouds in the sky. Lily turned around as if she was feeling Stephanie's thoughts and said, we're almost there. They flew directly into the white cloud. And when they did, it was snowing in there. Snowing. She reached out one of her hands and a snowdrop fell on her hand and she raised it up to her mouth and tasted it. It was a sugar melt, like sugar paper thin paper that was made from sugar that instantly melted on your tongue. All of the different snowflakes that landed on our hands were different shapes, just like snowflakes. And every one of them she ate. And every one melted. They were peppermint flavor. She thought how perfect peppermint and snow go together. And then, just as quickly, Lily flew out of the other side of the cloud, flew back down towards the ground, and landed next to Nightingale. Nightingale was black, black like the night sky. He was lovely. He was a big unicorn and very handsome. Let's go, Stephanie, he said. Stephanie climbed on Nightingale's back and they flew west.
It looked like they were flying to some kind of fairground. The place looked like it had all different rides. She saw a Ferris wheel. And then she saw an open space that looked like it had bumper cars in it. Are we going to the bumper cars? Stephanie said. That's definitely the direction that Nightingale was flying in. He didn't say anything, he just landed. And then, as Stephanie climbed off his back, he climbed into a bumper car. Stephanie did the same thing. The bumper cars, you're not going to believe this, wibbled and wobbled and shook and moved like jello. It was so funny. Stephanie's tummy turned upside down like, what on earth is this? The bumper cars were actually made out of a really firm jello, like jelly cars. And when you bumped into each other, it didn't hurt at all because the jello absorbed all the shock of the bump. Genius, she thought. She played bumper cars with Nightingale for about 10 minutes and she laughed and laughed and laughed. Nightingale turned out to be a very competitive unicorn. He would not let her win, so when she did win, she knew she was good. And then, very quickly, he said it was time to go. This time, Nightshade, the green, dark green unicorn, flew up in the sky next to them. Come on, Stephanie, climb on me. While they were flying. At first, Stephanie was a bit nervous, but then she trusted them. It was almost as if they were hovering like treading water in the sky as she crossed over from Nightingale to Nightshade. And then, just like that, Nightshade zoomed through the clouds and zoomed through the sky so fast. Nightshade liked to go fast. Because she went so fast, it didn't take her very long at all to get to where they were going. They landed in front of a cave on the south side of Moonbow Forest, a big hollowed out cave. And in the roof of the cave, she saw lots of things hanging from the top. At first she thought, oh gosh, are these bats? I don't think I like bats. But they weren't bats. They were actually pudding pops, like a popsicle made out of pudding, that were hanging from the sticks from the ceiling of the cave. And they were black like bats. Hmm, I wonder what they taste like, Stephanie thought. Nightshade knocked one down with her nose and then she knocked another for herself and started to chew on it off the ground. Stephanie picked hers up, smelt it. She couldn't really make out a flavour. She bit into it and it was definitely like pudding like a vanilla pudding or a chocolate pudding, but it didn't taste like either of those. It didn't taste like very much at all. Stephanie wasn't that impressed. She looked at Nightshade and said, what's this supposed to be? Nightshade said, oh, it's charcoal. It helps with your digestion. We figured maybe you'd need one of these in case you get an upset tummy for everything that you're eating today. And she started laughing. Oh, said Stephanie. That's perfect. Thanks a lot. Stephanie ate all of the pudding pop and then looked at Nightshade as if to say, yes, I'm ready. Let's go. She instantly started to feel as if her tummy was settling, like she took some Tums or something. Genius, she thought. And then... 
she landed next to Sunlight. Sunlight was a yellow, sunshine-looking unicorn. Very bright. Always happy. She motioned for Stephanie to climb on her back with her head. And Stephanie knew what she meant and climbed on the back of Sunlight. Sunlight flew north. She had bright yellow hair. It literally looked like Rapunzel hair. It was super long and blonde. Yellowy blonde. Golden blonde. Stephanie held on tight. And then she noticed that they were flying over a lake. A lake with sprinkles of yellow here and there and everywhere. What's the yellow? said Stephanie. Sunlight said, It's lemon wedges. Hold on tight. And just like that, Sunlight dive bombed into the lake full speed. It was freezing, freezing, freezing cold ice lemon water lake. It took Stephanie's breath away. She couldn't breathe. It was so cold, so cold. And instantly, within a couple of seconds, she flew out just as fast. Stephanie coughed and panted and caught her breath and said, What on earth was that? Sunlight said, Oh, I like to do that first thing in the morning. It's my ice dip. And this lake is so refreshing. Stephanie said, that was refreshing, all right. I almost jumped out of my skin. Sunlight laughed. And then started flying back to the rest of the unicorns. Sunlight was number seven. She went through eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, all over Moonbow Forest. Until her last unicorn was waiting for her. Number 13, Halo. Halo was his name. Halo was red. Red. Bright red. And he was beautiful. He was shiny. His coat was so healthy and shiny. Halo said it was time for her to rest. Climb on board. Stephanie was exhausted. She'd had so much fun, been to so many cool places, so many new places that she'd never been to before in Moonbow Forest. But he was right, she was exhausted. She flopped forward on his neck and put her arms around him and flew off into the sky. Halo took her east-west of Moonbow Forest and he flew for quite some time. When he landed, he was surrounded by these big, white, fluffy balls here, there and everywhere. He dropped her off directly next to one and told her to take a seat. Welcome to Cool Whip Couches, he said. Sit down and see what you think. The couch was literally made from Cool Whip. She sat on it. It softened and melted all around her like she was being cradled by a big, gentle hand. She wanted to say, wow, this is so comfortable, but she couldn't. She didn't have the energy. She closed her eyes 
and sank deeper into the cool whip couch. It was lovely, so comfortable, and it smelt so good like vanilla, like a body lotion, she thought, as she drifted off to sleep. She got heavier and heavier and sleepier and sleepier. Until she felt like she was floating away on the couch. Off on another adventure. Off into another world. Off into another world in another place, maybe. The end.